Welcome back to the garage and welcome back to the big green beastie. Now I bought this bike, it was probably about six months ago now, and I said before I start the full restoration on this machine, I was gonna try and start it just to be sure, you know, it runs, there's no horrible knocking from the engine or, or you know, what, just to understand what might, what could potentially be wrong with it. There's no point going through the whole bike, spending loads of money restoring it, only to find out, you know, the engine's blowing. So before I start the restoration, I'm gonna try and start this bike. And this video is gonna be all about trying to start this machine. Now this bike was basically left 10 years ago. It's probably been 11 years since this bike was last started. It was pulled up, turned off and left. So the fuel was left in it. That's all now evaporated. That's gonna have gunked up all the carbs. So part of this video, we're basically gonna strip it, strip the carbs, clean them, change the oil, fresh petrol in it and see if it will run prior to starting a full restoration on this machine. So if you're interested in garage fettling and seeing if this old green snotty bike is gonna run, then this is the video for you. So get yourself a cup of tea and Chopsy, roll the intro. So here is the big green beastie. This is uh, what we're gonna be trying to start today. Now this is a 1990 Kawasaki ZXR750 H2. When I first bought this bike, I thought it was a H1 model and some people said, oh, it's not the H1 Chopsy. The H1's got a different swinging arm. That's the H2 with the modified swinging arm slightly fettled engine. This has got bigger carbs on it and some other little fettling within the engine. So slightly more powerful and uh, the better bike out of the two. Now I've been very lucky. I've actually been lent a full, you know, inspection system here. But this is like a keyhole surgery sort of inspection piece. So you've got the main handheld unit here and then you've got the little bit which, uh, you poke in basically and what I want to do put it in the tank and look inside the tank and see how you know is it how much rust's in there is it okay just to use or I'm going to have to do put some sort of lining material in it or whatever you can steer that with the toggle here I can steer where I want that to go some people would add it up their bum shove it in Ooh, look at that a little bit of rust that's just very light surface rust there, isn't it? Down here, a little bit on the bottom there. I mean, it look for, oh, what's that? Oh dear, where's that? That looks a bit nasty, doesn't it? That's at the very top of the tank, like where you put your, your nuts against. That's up around the top, of there's the cap, look, where you can see my fingers there. So directly underneath at the top, it looks like it's a bit rusty. The worst part is just like right behind the filler at the top. But the actual bottom, you know, where the fuel sits, it's not bad. It's just the very top, which is, uh, which is rusty. Don't know. I really don't know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to whip the tank off. There's a local specialist to me, called a guy called Jeeps. I think he's an older boy who does a lot of restoration of fuel tanks. So I'm going to take the tank down to him. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be on YouTube or anything, you know. So this is just a, just a specialist, really. See what he thinks I should do with the tank, whether it's worth putting some sort of coating. I don't know. Whatever he suggests is what I'm going to do with the tank. Or it could be he'd say, yeah, you've got a bit of a rust scab, but, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> I really don't know. So tank's going to go to him. So basically what I'm going to do is start stripping this and see what it's like under all, all this bodywork, first of all. See what, so I'm not even taking the bodywork off. See what the condition's like. It needs a lot of work, this bike. For example, swinging arm, you know, needs a lot of work. Look at the radiator and sort of oil cooler. Everything in there is pretty, pretty shitty. Needs a lot of work. Forks are quite pitted, you know, needs a lot of work. Frame is quite corroded. Um, needs a lot of work. All the rear caliper, you know, that, that's lost all of its paint, you know, all the fittings and fixtures, they all need a lot of work. But the bodywork is reasonable. The front cow needs, needs repainting. But anyway, you know, let, let's start taking this stuff off, see what it's like underneath the covers, 
and uh, see exactly what I'm dealing with here. I must say a massive thank you. Now, I've forgotten your name, I'm, I'm really sorry. But uh, someone contacted me on Facebook and said they've got the full workshop manual for the bike. And here it is, you know, well used, but it's all in there. So this is gonna prove invaluable. Thanks so much for this. This is, this is gonna be a lifesaver, I'm sure of it. If I turn it on, I have some lights. So we have ignition lights. So turning it on, it seems to come into life, the bike. But uh, so that's, that's stage one. We have power. Oh, we're in. It seems the front seat's not even attached. Uh, this, this panel is snapped and it's not actually seating properly at the top there. That, all the foam on the inside of the panel sort of worn through. Why, why have foam on the inside of the panel? Oh, you see my feet, haven't you? Yes, I've got sliders and socks on. It's just because I just walked from my house into the garage. Shut up. This, this fuel line's going to need replacing. It's very brittle. Oh, God, is that season fuel yet? Mmm, that smells nasty. I'm feeling lightheaded. You aren't, maybe, so I'm getting high on these fumes. You're not the only one. Okay, so now. Let's lift the tank off and see what sort of disaster I'm facing underneath. Moment of truth, what we've got under the tank. Heavily corroded rocker cover. Wiring. Yeah, it seems all right. Dirty. There's the carbs. There's the throttle cables. The cables look like they're trying to turn. So I think the actual uh, Carbs have seized. What about choke? Same with the choke. The cable's moving. The airbox is actually quite interesting because even though you've got the big tubes at the front, this bike is pre-ram air. So you can see the actual air going into the engine is from behind the engine. That's the normal design you have on like parallel twins these days. You know, you're not you're losing all of that ram air effect by having, you know, you need the airbox turned around and the air driven into it. You know, that's what they do these days, but you know, this is pre-ram air. Air just being sucked in only, not forced into the airbox. Oh, what a really awkward design that is. What do these bits do? Not coming out yet. I've got to unbolt these, these bolt on. I don't know if this should have had something around it and it's just degraded or whether that's that foam from the inner panel getting sucked in, in again. I don't know. That one's better. These are all solid. I think I'm going to spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there just to see if I can free, free them up at all. That one's free. Now everyone will probably tell me this is an absolute no-no, but I'm going to have got a plastic chisel. Just going to put a little bit of pressure on it. Aha. That's that one. Now we can get at the actual throttle bodies. I think what I'll do, I'll take them off. I don't think there's anything else to be gained by doing it with on the bike. I'm gonna end up sort of spraying stuff down into the engine, so I might as well take them off, give them a good clean, and then put them back on again. I mean, I, I don't know whether to go mad and just do, you know, because obviously these are gonna probably need new seals, O-rings, rubbers, all the jets are gonna to have to be checked. Um, obviously they've got to come off the bike to do that, but there's probably no point going crazy here. You know, there's probably no point completely stripping these, rebuilding them all now. Or is there? Or should I do that now and get it out of the way? Or should I just get them operational and see if the bike will start? Hmm. I'm thinking maybe just get it operational. I've just um, played with the throttle a bit more and it's now working. The carb cleaner must have got through the uh, you know, soaked into where they were stuck. It's tight. Do you want to see in my hole? So we've got moving throttles now. They were completely gunked up. I've checked the, uh, the actual throttle cables and they're also fine. This is the choke. So even the choke is now moving now. But what I think we'll do 
I'm going to just take off the float bowls, have a look inside, see how old and mucky the fuel is, may sort of blow them out. I've got an airline down here, a bit of carb cleaner in them. Obviously, the, this is the problem with old bikes. All of the rubbers and the diaphragms over time, you know, degrade. Um, and I think if I were to take these top caps off, I think there's some rubber diaphragms under here. You know, I may not even get these back on again because that would expanded. <laughs> Why is the fuel green? Yeah, so I'm not going to take the top caps off. I'm just going to look in the float bowls, float bowls, see what the, the main jets, you know, if they've got any gunk in there and clean up all the, the bowl area, really. I'm not going to go in the tops of them yet because yeah, uh, it could be just a complete nightmare. So um, the jobs we're doing now is just to see if it runs. All this can be taken apart and completely uh, cleaned, you know, ultrasonically bathed and a whole real rebuild kit for the carbs. I just want to get it in an operational condition. Look at that green sludge in there. Nasty. So I've had to think about what I want to do and basically I think I'm just going to do what I've done on this one. Spray everything out. Make sure there's no blocked holes or anything, <clears throat> and then um, you know probably get these professionally cleaned and rebuilt later. Perhaps I mean I've squirted um, cleaner into the uh, main pot, main jet. And you can see as you squirt it, it comes out of the carb. So that would be going into the engine. So that's definitely clear. So I'm going to do the same thing for each of the other carbs, and then bolt them back on. But there we go, I think we'll chuck those back on and move on to the next phase. Carbs are now clean and ready to go back on. We've also got this, what looks like a fuel pump and filter here. So I'm surprised the bike's got a fuel pump. So first of all, that's a bit surprising. I thought it was just gravity fed, but there is a pump. So we're going to see if the pump still works. But just looking down in here, I mean, oh, it's in a terrible, terrible state you can see here there's like the alternator well, i say alternator generator but it's actually more like a literally like an alternator on this bike it must not have like a stator it hasn't got a stator like on a modern bike you know where you have the stator inside of the casing looks like you've got like a more of a sort of car alternator and a belt sort of being driven by the engine down there but i mean it looks it does look pretty grotty cam chain tensioner there and if you look inside here you can just about see the top of the valves we try and get some light hang on I can't get it but you can just the valves are in there and I can sort of see you know a bit of gunk on top of the valves maybe it's really hard to tell really hard to tell so um yeah I'm a bit sort of shocked I'm a bit sort of shocked at the amount of work here I mean that this this I think this bike is really on the limit of what what is salvageable if i'm honest you know obviously the rocker cover needs uh obviously that's fine but i'm just i'm a little bit worried now what the internals of the engine is going to be like you know is, is it i mean it hasn't been started for 10 years and i guess you know you're going to have oil i guess there's still going to be oil on the cylinders they're not going to have like rusty cylinders and stuff you know I'm actually thinking, how bad is this bike going to be? But let's, let's just see if it will run. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to drop the oil now. So I'm, I'm going to put the carbs back on, take the fairing panels off, drop the oil out of it. Let's see what sort of condition the oil's in that comes out. Check the coolant level. I'll change the coolant anyway, I think. Um, yeah, and then see. And then I'm going to crank it over, you know, just to, once the new oil's in it, obviously. Anyway, let's get the panels off. Old school battery with the separate, you know, not non-sealed battery. So you remember these? <laughs> I remember popping these caps off, put it on charge and it all bubbling up. And you have to top these up manually, top up the cells of the battery. Not seen one of them batteries in years. I may have to replace the battery. Whether that's gonna have enough power to crank the bike, phew, no idea. There is a lot of work there. My sentiments exactly, Mavis. So the carbs are back on. I'm now going to take the fairing panels off and drop the oil out the bike. I'm really interested to see the state of this oil. Um, yeah, this bike's pretty bad. This bike is almost like 
borderline whether it's worth restoring or not or just breaking and selling for bits but she's going to be saved she's going to be saved providing that engine isn't trash let's have a look i don't think we'll be putting these anodized blue bolts back on none of my tools are going to be virgins after this they feel dirty already well, slappers slappers i don't think any of these fairing fasteners are actually original Every single faster on that fairing is different. <laughs> Both sides. Well, initially, looking at it, so the paint's still on the cylinders. I guess that's the beauty of having a bike with fairing. The, the engine remains sort of out of the elements, doesn't it? Cylinders aren't too bad paint-wise again. Not too bad, are you gonna joking? Paint everything anyway. But um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Headers, little thing on the headers there, very slight, oil cooler. Obviously the, the guard's pretty rusty. Bolt missing here, <laughs> but it isn't too bad there. I've, I thought these had an internal oil filter. I've ordered the wrong oil filter because I thought it had an internal one, not an external one like that. The filter actually doesn't look that old, does it? Doesn't look that old, that filter. <clears throat> Which could be worrying. So what we're going to do, let's drop the oil out of it and have a look at the state of the oil. One thing I've noticed working on older bikes is that they're not quite as easy to work on as modern stuff. Prepare to get mucky. Yeah, that oil's pretty new to me. Oil out, interestingly, this oil looks, well, brand new. <laughs> looks brand new, the oil in the bike, so, which is actually you know, really quite worrying because maybe someone's tried to do this before. Maybe someone's tried to start this bike before, they changed the oil, put a new filter on. The air filter is also clean. I've just checked it. So it makes me worry that someone's attempted to start this bike. Also, the coolant looks decent as well. So this bike has either been, just been serviced, done within a couple of hundred miles and been parked up and left, or someone has attempted to change the oil and done all this and obviously maybe without success. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a worry. So let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. It's now day two of doing this. Now I am going to crank the engine over. Let's press the starter button and see if anything happens. Place your bets. I don't think it's gonna do anything. Call me old Mr. Cynical, <laughs> but I don't think it's gonna do anything. Start on. Ready? Is it a neutral? Neutral lights on. Ready? Here goes. 